that if you have education, you can face anyone on the planet Earth. My house was destroyed by a mortar. And then my mother was crying. And my father said, don't cry. I have educated them, all of them, so they will do well. UNESCO is the lead agency for uh, education for all, which is the second millennium development goal. My country has only 10 years old. We have around 60% of our population still illiterate. We are now trying to uh, make sure that by 2015, uh, liter illiteracy could be eradicated in my country. We need to do more for education. It's not a matter of um, uh, privilege. It should be the right for all people to not only be educated, but also to acquire knowledge. It's important not just for the development of the individual, but also for the development of the nation. Yeah. <laughs> นะครับและแน่นอนไม่มีเครื่องมืออื่นใดที่จะเปลี่ยนแปลงคนให้คนได้พัฒนาและมีความเจริญร่องงามมีแต่เรื่องการศึกษาเท่านั้นจะเป็
while Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi is trying to quash a rebellion in a country that holds Africa's largest crude reserves. Qatar, Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates are backing the insurgents. The conflict underlines the difficulties the 50-year-old organization, which accounts for about 40 percent of the world's oil, may have in deciding production levels. Oil has gained 9.5 percent this year to trade at about 100 U.S. dollar a barrel, amid signs that the pace of the global economic recovery may be slowing. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries will probably leave its output target unchanged on June 8th. Amid issues surrounding representation of Libya and oil prices correcting towards 100 U.S. dollars a barrel, OPEC is likely to sit on the fence, deferring a decision on quotas for later. Harry Ching Linguarian, the head of Commodity Market Strategy at BNP Paribas in London, said, This does not mean individual countries may not take discretionary steps to increase output. OPEC has yet to fill the gap in the market left by Libya. Fighting in a North African country has blocked 1.4 million barrels a day. An OPEC delegate said that producers need to boost supply by at least 500,000 barrels a day to meet demand. Saudi Arabia, the group's biggest producer and de facto leader, plans to raise output on its own by about 10 percent this month, according to Petroleum Policy Intelligence, a Winchester, UK-based industry researcher. U.S. crude futures traded below 100 U.S. dollar a barrel today on New York Mercantile Exchange. They rose as high as 113.93 U.S. dollars a barrel on April 29th and the most in two and a half years. Gaddafi and his Libyan opponents may dispatch rival envoys to this week's meeting. Iran, which holds OPEC's rotating presidency, is sending the former head of its fiscal education organization to lead the negotiations after President Mamou Ahmadinejad fired his oil minister on May 14. OPEC will need to boost output to 29.9 million barrels a day to meet average demand this year because of rolling growth in China, the group said in its most recent monthly report. That's 1 million barrels a day more than last month, according to data complied by Bloomberg. The International Energy Agency said May 19 that it saw an urgent need for more oil to help bring down high prices of threatening economies. Apple's chief executive officer Steve Jobs addressing an annual developers conference yesterday may give consumers a new way to access digital songs and information on their smartphones and computers. Jobs, who had been on medical leave since January the 17th, will make his second public appearance of 2011 at Apple's conference in San Francisco. He will preview software updates for Apple's iPhone, iPad and Mac, as well as the new iCloud online storage service, which may help those devices wirelessly share the same materials. Apple is using iCloud to retain its dominance in the smartphone and tablet markets amid fresh competition from devices powered by Google's Android software. The new service may improve how users can access content across different Apple devices, keeping customers from defecting to rivals, said Frank Gillard with Forrester Research. Gillard said so far the were people were hated to was they was they w did not have to think about which gadget had their stuff as people get their content organized around one of these personal ecosystems then it will be incredibly sticky because migrating won't be convenient the company's earlier foray into web-based services, Mobile Me, got off to a slow start, docked by breakdowns, including one that kept users from sending or receiving emails. Mobile Me, with a 99 US dollars annual subscription fee, eventually gained 3 million users, according to Foresters. That's a fraction of the potential customer base for iCloud. An analyst with a random Rodman and Ren show in New York said Apple may design iCloud to include features of the older offerings such as storage for email, contacts, calendars, photos, plus new options for music. 
Storage for movies and television shows may be added later. Google has become a political tool verifying the Chinese government. An official Beijing newspaper said on Monday warning that the U.S. Internet giant statements about hacking attacks tracing to China could hurt its business. A tough warning appeared in the overseas edition of the People's Daily, the leading newspaper of China's ruling Communist Party, indicating that political tensions between the United States and China over Internet security could linger. Last week, Google said it had broken up an effort to steal the passwords of hundreds of Google email account holders, including U.S. government officials, Chinese human rights advocates and journalists. It said the attacks appeared to come from China. The Chinese foreign ministry rejected those accusations that the party and newspaper warned Google against playing a risky political game by saying that Chinese human rights activists were among the targets of the hacking. Google was deliberately pandering to negative Western perceptions of China and strongly hinting that the hacking attacks were the work of the Chinese government. The People's Daily Overseas Edition, a small offshoot of the main domestic paper, said in a front-page commentary, Google's accusations aimed at China are spurious, have ulterior motives, and bear mal malign intentions, said the commentary written by an editor at the paper. Google should not become overly embroiled in international political struggle, playing the role of a tool for political contention, the paper added. For when the international winds shift direction, it may become sacrificed to politics and will be spurned by the marketplace, it said, without specifying Google's business could be heard. A Google spokeswoman said the U.S. firm had no comment on the remarks. The latest friction with Google could bring Internet policy back to the foreground of U.S.-China relations, reprising tensions last year when the Obama administration took up Google's complaints about hacking and censorship from China.